Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Everything One Note. I'm Andy Matisse, and today I'm going to go through and show you my top formatting tips for Microsoft One Note. Alright, guys, let's get straight into it. But don't forget, if you like the content Nathan and I put out, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell button so you're going to get notified every time we bring out new content. Here are my pro formatting tips. The first one is the most basic and the most simple one that anytime you create or write anywhere on a page, it does create a text container or also known as a text box. So for example, <clears throat> if I just start typing, you can see there it creates that little text container. It's one of the advantages of OneNote that anywhere I do type, <clears throat> I can just create a new text container and it's very free flowing and it's very good with its formatting courses, whatever it might be, is always try to keep the content relatively within one or a few text containers. And the advantage for that is it's very easy to then pick up all that information, that content, and move it all around. And it's not gonna be then impacted by any time you put other things, pictures, images on the page. It just creates a much easier structure for your page and for your formatting and putting things in the right places. Having those text containers all within the one text container makes life a lot easier. For example, you can see the difference between this text container is all within the one text container versus these ones being individual and are all over the place. So depending how you wanna set your pages up, my tip for that is trying to limit the amount of text containers or text boxes you use and try and keep it all in the one place. Tip number two is using tables. Now I'm a big fan of tables and I do use tables in some way or form in probably every page I create. It's very, very good for formatting, it's very good for structure, creating the layout and the setup that you want on your pages. So I find it's really good for, like I said, one formatting. Two, it's very easy to review the student work. If you're creating, if you're creating tables where you can put the question in the top cell and then get the students to answer in the bottom cell. So the advantage of that is when you are then reviewing the student work, it's very easy to tell what the students have answered and what they haven't answered. I also find that it's very easy to move the content around. So when you have it all in the one, obviously, text container, but also having tables all within the one place, like I said, it's very easy to pick all that up. It's all in one place and I can just adjust it to the left or right. I can copy it to the next page or another notebook. The advantage of using tables, if there's a need for it, is being able to sort those tables very quickly and easily. So if I highlight all that information, I'm gonna head up to table and I'm gonna to go to sorting and I can sort for ascending or descending order. And you can see that's just completely rearranged it. Andrew and Bettinelli at the bottom and Tim and Sarah and I can do the opposite. So a real good advantage if you're creating class lists to be alphabeticalized, a very quick tip is to put it into tables. So you can see the other advantages of using tables as well is just to create a bit more structure and formatting to your pages, you can create obviously single cells, double cells, you can create tables within tables, and you can keep it all nice and neat within the one place. Tip number three is shading. So we're continuing on with tables now, and I'm just gonna draw a couple of examples. I'm gonna insert a couple of cells. But the advantage of using shading, I find I use it a lot for questions, but also when I'm creating content, I use it a lot for headers as well. I have a topic we're looking at, maybe the four Bs of marketing. And the first one for that is product. And then I'm gonna write all of my information in here in that bottom cell. And I'm gonna create a new table, two by one. And now we might be up to the place. But you can see it now creates a very obvious visual heading for that information that you want to be very obvious for the students. But also if you're doing questions and answering, this might be question one here for the students. And I'm gonna color that in just a nice gray color and to write the question there, and then you want the students to go in and fill in that information in the bottom. So taking use of, you can see we're using, we're starting to build on these formatting tips. We've got a text container or a table, and we've incorporated some shading to help you with your formatting. Tip number four is hiding the borders. We're still talking tables in this tip, so you can see they're all starting to build on with each other. You can create a lot of your structure and setup of your pages with tables, and then take those borders away and you can create a nice visual layout and format for your page. So for example, you can see I've got some tables here, I've got some shading set up and I've got some tables within tables. 
Sometimes tables within tables, too many lines, it can start to look a bit clunky and a bit much. And a little tip for that is to simply remove the borders. So I'm gonna highlight that table I want. I'm gonna go up to table and I'm gonna hit high borders and you can see that now it disappears. And I'm gonna show you an example now of this page with borders and I'm gonna take some of the borders away. So here's an example of the same page and I've taken pretty much all the borders away but you can see by still using and incorporating tip number three shading it still creates that nice banner, that nice header for what I want to display for the students, but it gives the students somewhere where they can write as well. So you can see the difference between using the borders and not using the borders. It's a personal choice, I guess, which is up to you. In some instances, I find that hiding the borders looks a lot better than using the tables, but for other examples and reasons, I find the table having the borders there is important and it's better for the students to be able to see and know what they're doing as well, where to write or what to write. Tip number five is tags and it kind of solves one of the problems we had in tip number four, which is hiding the borders. You can use the same example of text containers, table shading, hide the borders, but then the students often don't know sometimes what or where to write. You can use shading for that. So it could be you set up a bit of a uh, key whether anything that's shaded in green means the students needs to answer or write something in that container But you can also use the tags or to-do list as well So you can see the difference between group one and group two here It's essentially the same activity a lot of tables within tables So I've removed some of the borders and I'm using tags to, for the students to identify what dinosaur they're doing But also to make it easy for them to know where to write and where to answer So in this example, you know, they're in a t-rex and a carnivore and they write their three facts in there below It's very clear and easy for them over here, same thing, and you can see there's not much difference over here. We might choose the pterodactyl. I think they're a carnivore as well. Um, but being able to use the tags down here as well, it's very clear for the students to know what to write or where to write. So you can use a combination of the tags. You could use some shading as well if I want to fill that in to make it very obvious where you want the students to write those. Or you can go ahead and do, I guess, a bit of a combination where at times you might find that removing the borders here is a good idea, but down here where I want the students to be able to know that there's three different cells there, I might bring the borders back in for that one and remove my shading. And it's very clear for the students to know that where they've got to write and how many things they've got to write. So up to you, a bit of a personal choice there in how you want to incorporate all of those things. Tip number six is headers, and this is something that I do sometimes in some of my OneNote pages to create a bit more of a different feel to your page, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna to head to my downloads and I'm just gonna drop an image. I'm just gonna drag it straight in there on the page and get it out of that text container. And I'm just gonna put it up here above my header. And I'm just gonna drag it out a little bit, you know, depending how big your header is or how big your page is, how big it's zoomed in. And then I have a nice little header on my page to start my page. You could also do the same thing for a border down the left. I use that in some of my pages. I have a colorful little border over to the left. But anything you can find that's relevant, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples now. This is one for a personal finance unit or a business subject. Another example is, so it could be relevant to what you're talking about or what you're teaching that topic. Doing a bit of editing, cropping sometimes to get the right specific size and how you want it. It does take up a bit of space at the top of your page. I guess you sort of got to weigh the pros and cons of that. But it does create a nice image and a nice visual appeal to your page and creates a bit of a structure and formatting to how you want it to be set up. Another example is, this is a Bali page. We could see, depending on the image, you might look at changing the font to white. If you can't really see the black text there, it sort of clashes with the background of that image. Highlighting that and usually generally going with the white text is gonna help you out there to make it very clear what it is that the heading still is. And my last formatting tip is setting things as a desktop background. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag a map of Australia. Now that I've got that on my page, I wanna go and right click on that image and set it as my desktop background. So you can see I can no longer click on that image. I can't move it around. And the advantage of that is if you're creating images on your pages, you might want that image to stay where it is and essentially anything in and around it will move and it won't be impacted by that image and that image is not gonna impact anything else because it's set as a desktop background. But the advantage of that is having like, for example, a map or it could be a diagram and then having your students be able to go in and they can then go through and start creating those text containers if they're plotting these things on maps or if they're using a device that has a stylus, 
They can obviously just hand write, draw. Um, so it's a really simple formatting tip there is in your images, setting them as the desktop background. Simply right click if you want to undo that. If I decide I want to move it or resize it or make it a bit smaller, and then I can set that as my desktop background again, and you're good to go. So there you go, those are my pro formatting tips. Definitely have a look and have a try at some of those if you don't incorporate some of those things into your OneNote pages. Thanks for watching. Ciao.